maybe let's start at the very beginning. What is Code Train and what is your mission? Um, so Code Train is an in-person training program, and our main goal is to transform um, people here into professional software developers, and then we find them opportunities. You know, um, because now um, tech is taking over the world. And um, there is a huge tech revolution in Africa. I mean, all the countries now, the majority of payments in Ghana is all mobile money. You know, whereas in 15 years time, it wasn't like that. Um, E-commerce has taken over like, the entire Africa. You know, now people don't, people shop on Instagram. You know, I go online first to search for things if I step out of, you know, uh, my room. And um, so many companies are now resorting to tech. Um, but at the same time, we don't have you know enough um, skilled people to manage and build the future of this um, this revolution. Um, so Co-Train's mission is to you know provide that needed human resource to you know um, be able to man this um, this whole change. So the idea is to empower young people to take advantage of the digital revolution yeah, by training exactly. them. Yeah, by training them. Yeah. Where did you get the idea to do that? Um, so it's it's partly um, with um, my my experience as a, in tech, and um, I mean everywhere in the world there is um, everybody wants to hire a software developer, um, and at the same time, like in Ghana, uh, you have so many, and even most of West Africa, you have so many um, young people with so much talent, so much talent, like, um, like when we were kids, we used to do our own aeroplanes, we used to do, we used to use our milk tins to do our own um, um, telephones, you know, using wires, you know, we, we, we did a lot of things, we had a lot of dreams, like, you know, we did our own toys, you know, and we have so much talent, um, but at the same time, there isn't much opportunity nowadays. You know, finding jobs is becoming very difficult. Um, the entire sixty percent of the population is is youth, and you know there isn't much you know um, employable skills. You know, but all this talent is resting. You know, and it's idle; it's not being put to use. Um, so I just combined the, the fact that there's opportunities in the tech space, and at the same time there is you know human resource lying out there which is not being transformed. And um, I thought that if I could, you know, help transform this human resource, um, they could take, we could match them to opportunities in tech to create a lot of value. So what does the process look like from the time someone comes and says, okay, I want to get trained, yeah. up to the point where you help them to find uh, employment? So what we do is, um, it, it's, it's a very, very interesting process. Um, and um, it's one of the things that really drives me to, you know, to do code training. Um, to see someone come in and and start from from us from fresh like scratch, where they you know they they feel they don't even believe they could you know um, become professionals and they don't believe they could you know venture into the world of tech, and then to see them week in and week out um, complete projects and then um, sometimes it gets a little frustrating and. Um, then after the first month, second month, then they now understand why, you know, certain things were taught and they start, you know, putting things together um, to a point where now you see them working on like, you know, a fully a full project um, and they're testing the apps um, to a point where they, you know, they actually present their final projects to employers and recruiters on a demo day. Um, I mean, it's, it's really, really um, fulfilling. It's something too that drives our, our community because you you don't you don't you never feel that you are alone or or when you have challenges. Two months ago, someone had the same challenge, you know. Um, yeah. When you say that it's a very interesting process, I 100% believe it because just looking around at this room, <laughs> yeah. this is not my idea of when I hear coding, web yeah, developing yeah. and whatnot, it's so bright and and colorful and pictures and yeah. I can feel the warmth. So are you the, the one that creates the curriculum or these different activities to make it uh, also fun for everyone? 
Yeah, so um, firstly, um, we, so the way we train and um, is, is quite different um, from, you know, the traditional way of, you know, like school system. Um, and also to, we are a machine driven um, um, company. Code training is not just, now just like um, a, a code school, a school, but code training is kind of like a new um, way of thinking for the youth. Um, co-training is not like a, a philosophy, you know, and a change in, in, you know, in the way that our society is supposed to do things and, and kind of like, you know, a, a global space where the youth can feel free and dream and um, be world class and do things that, you know, is, is similar on a global level. And one of the things that we've not really worked on a lot um, in our education system here is um, basically values, you know, and um, bringing out the internal energy in people um, and, you know, making them believe they can do things and then making them dream again is something that we've not really, and also helping people to be able to work together, you know, is something that we've not really come up with. Um, so. Firstly, we have like sessions where um, new students that come in would have to um, come together when they start to say, okay, well, so what kind of environment do you want to learn in? Or what kind of environment do you want to work in? You know, what kind of environment do you think can make you successful, you know? And they write things like values like empathy, diligence, tolerance, you know, discipline, organized need, like, you know, um, things that, you know, the kind of space that they would want to create you know, to create an enabling environment. And then we also like encourage them to like think about what they want to achieve and their purpose and, you know, their dreams they would, they would want to fulfill. And with that base, then we are able to like, you know, um, get them motivated and be able to work extra hard because they know they want to achieve something. Um, and also to, we, we don't want a system where they don't, they can't innovate. Because an innovative system should be very free and everything. So that's why you see like, it's very colorful here, you know. And at the same time, there is a lot of liberty and freedom and creativity. So you can see like a student sitting on the floor on their laptop, you know, um, or sometimes um, senior students teaching junior students. Um, and the, the last thing about our training program is it's, it's a different kind of training. So we use um, a kind of like system where if you come to co train, you can never tell the difference between who is the teacher and who is the, the student. You know, we, and because I believe that if um, everybody's on the same level, it's easier for you to ask me, you know, questions and be honest with me. And, and when you create, and it takes some time friendship, it takes, you know, um, so we, we use like um, a peer system where everybody is the same. You can ask questions to your teachers. The teachers are very open and, you know, you can be honest with them. Um, and I feel that that level of um, relationships, it brings a lot of confidence in our people. And um, they can even carry most of those um, uh, relationships and confidence to, into companies and they can add real value to, um, to their companies. I know you've mentioned that you were motivated to start Code Train because of uh, you are already involved in in tech, like that's your yeah. background, right? Yeah. But I don't like what was the one point, something that happened, and out, or did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Like what happened that you said, okay, there's a problem here, and I believe I can fix it. It's time to do something. Yeah, I think, so the first thing that really got me was, um, I think when I was, um, I was in high school, um, my, my dad used to work in a, a, you know, in a hospital as the, you know, in community health. And he used to manage the polio immunization program. And they used to go to rural areas, like, you know, in, in, you know, um, in rural areas to, you know, offer uh, polio and vitamin E vaccination. And there was a time when I skipped school to volunteer as, you know, uh, on it, right? And um, we ended up going to like a lot of villages, like remote areas, you know, um, to offer, you know, the vaccination. 
and then and that was the first time in my life i moved out of my comfort zone like you know go and i saw how lucky i was and i saw how people a lot of people can um didn't have the privilege that i had and um, a lot of people needed help and you know i realized that you know the reality of um of things so since then i've always wanted to do something um to help people do something to change you know um to change things um and um when i finished university and i was in my national service um i there was a school just opposite my house and so i decided to help them because i did a, my my degree is in mathematics so i decided to help them um i mean I, i was so i told myself that i have a degree in mathematics right i live in you know in a village and opposite the village is a school and they obviously will have ma- bad math grades so i just stepped in and then um helped them improve their math grades and that year they had the best uh, math grade grades um after you know, when they wrote the basic education some of the students are now in the university some of them have completed um and i mean that also was something that really got so i knew i always knew that i would always do something um to change um things whether it's working in a big organization or me starting my own organization like i always knew that um i've you know it i've, I've always had in it in me to to you know to help people and to to change um things yeah okay what about code train yeah so with yeah so i mean with that background um and i mean my first so my first um you know venture in entrepreneurship and in in making a change was was in teaching right yeah. um you know helping you know help helping students with their math grades and then i went to mest it's uh, it was a two year program by then now it's a one year program and i i learned how to become a software entrepreneur so i learned software development and i also learned like business startups how to you know um build um identify a problem and you know get a solution for it and you know be able to like you know um you know come up with a powerful idea and to start a business and i did that for some time and then with time the dots started connecting right like uh, my my you know experience in tech and my experience in like teaching and my volunteering experience like in um polio immunization um and my business skills and everything now came into into play um and you know and now like i'm running co-train you know um and which is a school you know that relates to, like the teaching when i was you know when i started teaching and then it's also in tech which relates to my experience in in um um at mest and also to it's um it's also a startup and it's it's a thriving business and which you know goes down to like the things that i learned in um, in business um so yeah i feel that um like finally like i found my place in this world and how i can help and you know to change society and to to you know to create value what was the reaction of your parents or your family and your yeah. friends when you decided to um to start coaching yeah i mean it's um i mean i've always been unpredictable so yeah, it was i was I've, i've always done things like i'm always doing something new um doing this program you know so it didn't come as a, as a surprise um to them because before i did code train my previous startup failed uh, it was a, it's a it was a purely tech startup it was an aggregation platform um and but then in the me i was doing consulting by then and and then so code train actually started when when i was doing consulting i had a small office and i had some interns and they couldn't do much because they didn't have any skills so i decided to train them you know because i've always had something for teaching and they kept on inviting their friends like you know their friends just kept coming um so can i have a friend can he also join can he also join can he also join and then um that was when i realized that well you know this is something that um could be of you know of, of value you know um so so then um i decided to 
stop all the consulting and just to you know concentrate on you know doing this right maybe there's something in it so i shut down my office everything you know um and then i moved to my house and started coaching from the kitchen right um and i i bought my first uh first set of tables and chairs and that first set of table is actually this table <laughs> And then um, I think we bought some of these white chairs, seven of them in my kitchen. Um, and then um, it got to a time the kitchen was too small and we and I bought a new set of chairs like this, these ones, and then um, some other um, tables as well. And then we, we moved to my bedroom, <laughs> like, you know. Um, and then the, so, so then we, I started, um, you know, and I was living on like the money I'd saved from a consulting, and then I decided to start, you know, maybe it is something that um, I started experimenting on how this can be sustainable, and you know, and the students were open to paying to um, to learn because they felt that they were getting a lot of value. Um, so then uh, we started growing, and then we moved to um, to this place um, in a smaller office, and and then we've always um, um, grown. And um, one thing that really, 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 really motivated me was, um, and the truth is, I would have stopped co train because, like, I got a lot of offers, and I got a lot of, um, uh, I got a lot of, um, and it was, it was honestly very, very difficult period. Um, but one thing that motivated me was one day, you know, in my kitchen, uh, so I asked them, like, are they okay? Is this something, you know, and. Our first set of students, they told me like, yeah, here yeah, is even better. Like in, in your office that we didn't even feel at home. Here we can cook. We can stay here the whole day if we want. We can, you know. And it really, really motivated me. Um, and um, those first set of students, um, all of them are now working. Um, some of them are senior developers in companies. Some of them come back as mentors. Um, I employed, I've employed five of them. I'm working with the co train team now. And uh, yeah, those five became teachers. One of them is managing ad admissions. One of them is managing like the entire business. Um, four of them are teaching. And um, I, you know, it's, 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 when I look back, it's been a very, very um, interesting um, um, journey. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> Um, I'm curious, I don't know if this is a guarantee or a promise that you give uh, your students, but how can you be 100% sure that after the program you will find employment for them? Yeah, so the thing is this, um, in, in the tech space alone, right, there, is, there, there isn't enough tech uh, like developers to meet um, demand um, as it stands. Um, even outside Africa. So there is always like, people are always posting jobs, even remote jobs, like they don't care where you work from or if, you know, um, and that was like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, right? Before the whole tech revolution started in, in, in Africa. Now the demand here is, is crazy. I mean, companies here hire, you know, people from China, India to build software for them. Like, can you imagine, like we have, you know, people here that, you know, have potential, have, have the potential, but they don't have the skills and we are exporting all that. Um, even there are some African countries that even like import software, right? Um, and that is for businesses and institutions. Now, every business is selling online in, 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 in Ghana or in West Africa or in, in most of Africa. Like, you know, every, every shop has an e-commerce bit to it, you know, social media bit. Even churches need, you know, software to manage the people, like manage um, for, you know, manage funds. And all the banks now have uh, apps, like all the banks, like all the banks, you know, um, you, it's online banking, it's everything. Um, so the, the, entire, um, um, the entire space is now tech, right? Um, even, so that is for hardcore people, tech people. So the people that we are trained, some of them can become like hardcore coders, right? And the truth is, we can't. We don't even have capacity now to train enough to meet demand, right? Um, and we are trying to raise funding, to, you know, to, so we can train more people to meet that demand. 
now apart from people that are going to like you know code things and do hardcore um, um like tech build products um anybody that comes here and you know learns how to code and you know learn the tech and mobile web you know they they are in a better position to to like be more uh, productive and to to work better if they move into other areas right um, because let's say you are working for a consulting firm that is managing farmers in, in let's say then you know Senegal or you know northern or in in on Ouagadougou or somewhere, right? And you have like a tech, you know, you have a co-train background. You could actually like think about how to find scalable solutions to um, to some of the problems that they have, you know. Um, for instance, like um, um, bridging the gap between the market and like farmers. Um, you could always have, you know, think about innovative and scalable ways to create value and to create wealth and jobs. And which is, that is the kind of mentality and the kind of people that um, um, we need. So we need, yeah, we need to train like so many people. So there is, there is actual like, um, in the short term, there is a lot of like guarantee for jobs like international and local. Um, and also in the long term, there's a lot of, you know, guarantee for um, for opportunities um, and it's not only jobs but the ability to create new um, um, new enterprises like new solutions new innovations um, and some of these guys are going to become like the next um, tech um, entrepreneurs like myself I think in the future what would you say is the most uh, difficult thing about being a tech entrepreneur as you put it Everything, <laughs> yeah. Everything is is very difficult, um, and I, I think it and it's it keeps getting better now, because now I remember. I mean, at some point, like um, most tech entrepreneurs who can relate to it. Like every time you or even developers, your family members always ask you. So, what do you do again? Can you explain to us what you do again? Every time, like, what do you do? And even for myself, um, so even the society itself doesn't understand tech. Um, until recently, when our parents are using WhatsApp, whatever, you can tell them, yeah, like, the WhatsApp you are using, I feel like we do it, you know, like, we, it's about what we do. Um, but it's always been very difficult. Um, and um, the infrastructure, too, you know, it's, it's a little bit challenging, but it's getting better. And we have 4G now in Ghana, probably in other countries, in West Africa, probably um, they might have, or it, it's, it's getting better. Um, things things didn't used to be, you know, there's like, at first, I remember about 10 years ago, not many people had smartphones. Um, it was it was just like dumb phones, like everywhere. Um, and now, I'm sure as you're moving, uh, when you guys were traveling, so even people that saw in, in, in the traffic, some of them have two smartphones, you know, um, some of them. So tech is getting much better. Um, we still have some challenges, like data costs are very expensive. Um, it's much, much more expensive to run, um, um, to, to get data and to get like reliable internet. And sometimes it can put business off. Um, imagine a student had to, has to do um, an interview with a, with a firm in, in San Francisco, you know, and the internet is, you know, I mean, the internet sometimes is good, but it, it's not assured, right? It could act up. Um, and you know, so and it requires sometimes a lot of funding to be able to get all the infrastructure you need to you know in order to be world class. Um, that is one of the you know uh, the challenges. Um, apart from that, to be a tech entrepreneur, I think the previously you could say like the market most of times the market wasn't ready for the kind of tech solutions that uh, most tech entrepreneurs like you know try to come up with um because um it's 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 a different thing building a tech product and it's a different thing getting users people to use it and sometimes um, we as tech entrepreneurs are out of tune with what people actually want or what is actually like um needed or what actually can work and you don't understand why like you know why 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 are you not using the map you know why are you not using you know um, so it, it's also, and I think that, um, so yeah, so there were so many ideas in the past, even in the last 10 years that um, weren't really, you know, viable. Um, 
Because I remember at first, like, the internet, we had was 2G. We had 2G, you know. And we had, like, uh, feature phones. Um, now we have smartphones, we have 4G. So now you can run e-commerce, you can run so many things. So as the infrastructure and things are getting, and the market too is warming up for tech, you know, a lot of things are going to become possible. I'm just curious how you navigate some of those challenges. For example, for us, we're just traveling and yeah. the internet, super unreliable and also the data is so expensive for example and of course like you've mentioned funding and so on how do you navigate some of these things yeah the truth is for me i so it's it's so many different bits and parts that i i mean i i, I think two years ago i decided so coaching is only two years and um i i decided that um i would concentrate on one thing at a time you know, truth is I can't manage, I can't, um, you know, focus on all the things because it's so con time consuming, it's going to take a lot of resources. Um, so I decided to do, okay, what is most important at a time? So um, in the first year, the idea was to create, um, is to, to prove that, you know, we can use these new concepts and we can, you know, find a new, new ways and better ways of training people to become um, world-class professional software developers that are ethical, you know, and that, that you know, um, that have values and that have dreams and, you know, um, and we were, we were able to prove a lot of success stories and everything with it. Um, the second year was to, you know, expand and, um, and also to, to institute it, like to establish it and, you know, get a very firm, you know, foundation so that it can grow. Um, and so while doing that, some of the challenge, I think the first year, the challenge was mainly, okay, who is this guy, you know, trying to start a new tech school in from his kitchen? Like, why would I bring, why would I go? Like, why would I, there are other institutions that, you know, they are offering so many things, like huge, you know, other, why would I come to this place? You know, like, what is the value? You know, so it was very difficult, you know, getting people into the program. Um, and you are small, you know, and you know, the education is all about reputation. Um, but as time went on and we started sharing success stories and companies started hiring our students, you know, it, it's, it's, it's even right now, it's, you know, but it's much, much better than two years ago. Um, uh, and then the second year, while well, we, when we had proven, you know, had some, you know, social proof and everything, then the challenge was, um, how do you now fund you know the things like how do you organize boot camps how do you you know how do you run like getting a, a, you know a, a place where students can sit and you know you get like an ac like you work you know there is there's electricity running 24 7 there is a backup generator um, there's internet there's everything now it, it fell on that right and um, with that one too i mean the second year i decided um I would want to run something that is viable and is sustainable in the long run. Um, because I believe like in Africa, one of the things that we've not been able to do is to build um, companies that can last. You know, like we've not been able to build companies. We build companies that, you know, just stay around for a while and they don't go like, oh, they are not sustainable in the long run. You know, we need to build like billion dollar companies that, you know, can last for maybe, you know, a hundred years or could be, in the top, you know, 100 companies and, you know, or top 500, you know, companies. Um, and I thought that, like, from scratch, like, you know, I needed to build a model that can be sustainable and then we can get more funding to, you know, um, to scale it up. So then I instituted, it's more like a traditional school system where students come and they pay their fees. And from start, we decided to go lean um, so that we can um, run, um, uh, expenses um, and then to get to a point where we are profitable and at least like even you know where we are we are just breaking even or we are not you know in depth and we and we are still having like a lot of social impacts and then we can you know move to the next level of and I think with that it's much easier you know without social proof to raise funding to get support to get partners and that is the stage where we are um, we are at now Speaking of, what kind of support system did you have throughout this whole process? So the, the, 
the biggest one was some of my colleagues that I, you know, started learning how to code with them. Um, some of them I worked with them. Um, they were, you know, of a lot of support um, because they they mentored some of the students that I had, and some of them are working in, you know, different different uh, top companies. They provided a lot of um, resources and time in, you know, helping with the training, and some of them still do. Um, and some of them also, one, one of the main things that we, I, I did was to go to the universities and to hold um, mini boot camps, you know, um, to, you know, to enlighten people. Hey guys, like they, they, they are huge global opportunities for you guys, you know, just start learning, you know, this now. And then when you finish school, you can you know, get opportunities and all that. And sometimes some of my friends came on board and some of them are like some of them are tech CEOs and, and, and it was fun like and they felt like they felt also you know they also felt like it's a fulfilling thing. So it, it's one big um resource that I mean it's it's um something money can't buy, you know. So with all of that said, on a scale of one to ten, how exhausted are you right now? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> um I yeah um so it's so from one to ten like it's always been like 14 so 11 is quite good uh, because at first i had to um i had to do a lot uh, at first because like i was teaching i was running a business and i was doing a lot of things um, but right now we have about we have 10 we are a team of 10 um and we have someone that just manage you know deals with um um admissions you know she makes sure, sure like every other month we bring in a new class of 20 to 30 students and we have um a general manager you know she manages the two halves in here and um and kumasi and she makes sure like all operations are you know catered for she, she also organizes programs um in the halves um, and also we have teaching fellows they are from my fair set of students um, and um, they and they teach um, what I do is to hold meetings um, with the students mentor them um, you know and work on the curriculum like get on partners like I also do a lot of hiring now and bringing on uh, partnerships like uh, right now we are talking with one um, organization in, in the in, uh, in the states um, to help hire um, and provide hiring opportunities for our students and also talking to um, hiring um, recruitment companies here and the companies here to um, hire our students so now it's it's a little it's it's less you know i don't do the, all the nitty-gritties now so it, it's much more comfortable at 11. no i ask because it's it's a running thing that we hear all the time yeah. especially at the very beginning when it's you just have you your dream and you're the only one that believes in it and to bring it to fruition there's a lot that you have to do constantly yeah. and it it sounds quite frankly very exhausting yeah yeah it's 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 very very exhausting and i mean it's not only as i mean i'm okay with the exhaustion part you know mm. but it's also depressing sometimes like it's yeah like it, it's it's a really lonely and you know journey and um, i think now for me like it's much better um, because you know we have like employees I can talk to, I have uh, mentors I can I can talk to, um, you know. So it's much easier now. I have advisors, but yeah, like from the start, um, it's it's very very depressing, and um, you just move by day. You know, there are really really some lows and everything, but um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 very very it's it's very 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 depressing. How, okay, I, I don't know how to ask this question. I want to ask like two in one. So um, how do you uh, deal with that? And in the same breath, if there was uh, a young person right now in Accra who has a big idea and wants to start something, what piece of advice would you give them now knowing all those things and then throw in there how 
you, the problems they're going to have and how they can navigate them? That's a big question. <laughs> I think that it's... So, I mean, I, I don't know, um, but I can... Um, I So naturally, for me, um, naturally, I, I hate being bored, you know, like I hate being at one place, you know, I um, I get bored very easily. So I always want to do something bold, you know. Uh, so and it, it has really helped me on this co train journey because every time we get bored, like I, I call my team and say, like, let's do this, you know, and then it's a new challenge, you know, and it's exciting as well. So I think that I think the biggest the biggest thing that can stand in the way of like some a young person in a crowd who is trying to do things is um, not being bold enough, you know, not being because we think about something, one thing, and then we think about ten blocks to it. Like you know, you think about ten. Like don't worry about the blocks. If the blocks happen, you start all over. You know, you try something else, right? Um, so. Um, so yeah, like for instance, like some months back, I told my team, like, let's set a new bunch in Kumasi and, you know, we just packed our bags, like, you know, and it's, you know, we have a team of three there, like, you know, it's working our students there. Um, I mean, it's, 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 uh, everything is, is possible. Um, and what do you lose if you don't? So I think that we should just try things and have an open mind and, um, and then you just try it, you know, and you don't know, and I think often, most often not, it works. Um, if you are very bold and you you, you try it, um, yeah, I think so. That is what is something that has really um, um, motivated me. And you wouldn't know the next thing I want to try, right? It will scare you. <laughs> okay, I've heard you speak uh, very fondly of your team. How do you pick? Uh, how did you pick your team? Are there any special tips and tricks that you can give someone, or or was there like a special way that you did it? So, um, so I think so. It's it's all lies in you know Cotrain's philosophy, right? And like we, um, firstly, everybody that works, um, apart from one, even they had some. So, like all, I mean, ninety five percent of our employees, they they all have like you know they are graduates from our program, and the kind of people I want to train for companies are the kind of people that I want to hire. You know, and the kind of people I want to hire are the kind of people that you know they have um, they have certain values. You know, um, people that want to be a part of something big. You know, people that have dreams. Um, you know, people that have you know like that ensure standards. People that are positive. You know, because working in a start you know working with something that is small is can be very frustrating. You know. And um, I remember when I started, and sometimes you have to be humble and believe in small stats, you know. Um, because my first teachers, I pitched to them to, to, you know, to work with me, that I'm going to build something like this. Um, and something like this is going to come um, from when I was working in the kitchen, you know. And the students used to come around, and, and sometimes when they come, um, food around that area was very expensive. So I had a rice cooker, the students would just buy other stew and then they just cook rice and eat and everything. Like it's very difficult to sit in that environment to picture, you know, um, that in two years time you probably be um to be become one of the, you know, biggest code schools in, in West Africa. You know? Um, I mean how if I told you that and that that's a good it's, it's going to be, you know, but um, it takes people that, you know, uh, want to be part of something big. And that are positive, you know, um, and they see, you know, a glass half full, um, and people that are cheerful too and hardworking, um, and have like, you know, some underlying values, and they believe in, um, you know, they believe, you know, they believe they believe in our vision. So that is what um, I, I look at, and that has been the culture of um, the company even um, even now. Richard, if someone wants to attend the program, uh, how much do they have to pay to to become certified uh, developers? And yeah, how does that work? Yeah, so we have um, so in in culture there is in Ghana there is a culture of people um, paying you know to get a better life, and so we um, we we run a program, a two phase program. 
So the first phase is a six months intensive training program. Um, and then we have um, a six months men mentoring program. Um, the training program um, costs 3,600 CDs, which is around $680 um, for the entire six months. Um, and it is looking at comparing it to what like you know the market is paying and um, we for us we we run everything from scratch to the time you become a professional developer we don't teach you and we and it's also one-on-one -on -one centered and we teach you everything you need to need to to learn um but in other programs it's it's not a, a holistic program you don't do practical projects plus and you only do theory and get a certificate but one of and sometimes it can it can take you doing three certifications to get to that professional level and you can pay three times the cost of how much our students actually pay um and then after that we we match them to jobs you know and to companies and we help them in interviews and we have a soft skills training program run by an ex amazon recruiter to help them uh, move from just a young person can go to a professional that is ready to work in a, in a, in a company and to you know, offer value. And then we, so that's a six month training program and it's a paid program. And that is what sustains us. Then we have um, a six month mentoring program, which is sponsored by us, right? And that is one way of we helping out. So after the training program, we still keep them and teach them, you know, for another six months whilst we are trying to get them internships and are trying to get them jobs and we are trying to like you know give them career guidance and they use our hub as an, their office they come here they learn until they they find jobs or they find um, uh, other opportunities yeah and one of the things that we've been trying to do is to get um support and funding to run the mentoring um because now we have a lot of the uh, people graduating and yeah we need more resources to support that wow did the, um, do the companies ever pay if you help them to find a developer? Um, so, so one of our assumptions, so one of the things, um, I mean, we are rolling out very soon is to have, um, uh, we are getting a value proposition for the companies um, because the traditional uh, HR companies here, when they find a, a candidate, they, they you know, charge the companies to pay for you know, a recruitment. It's not cheap. Yeah, yeah, and it's not cheap, right? <laughs> Um, however, we want to, um, you know, improve that model um, where we are, once the comp the, we match our developers to, to companies, um, we can, um, instead of they paying a recruitment fee, um, they can pay a fee for the continuous development of the students over some years, right? So during that period, we continue teaching them, we continue supporting them because the companies don't have time to teach them the technologies that you're using and yeah they're you know, changing everything. fast right? yeah, yeah they're changing very fast so we are we continue teaching and mentoring them uh, wow. during that period but in the past um you know that you know we wanted to create have a reputation um so we've we've not really charged companies and we've offered all that for free and even some of our students that are still graduates that are still working they still come back anytime um, but yeah i mean the but i mean to in order to make it more sustainable and we, we are looking at running a full HR um, service where we are offering training and also we are helping them in their personal development as well. And because we would want some of them to go into leadership and management roles. Yeah. Wow. I also read that you have an entire online program that I could access from, I don't know, Nigeria yeah. or anywhere. Yeah. How does that work? And are people already taking advantage of that? Yeah, so I think eight months ago, um, one thing that really inspired us and really um, got us was we had a student who, um, you know, um, called us and he told us he's moving from Gambia to Accra just because they want to, you know, do our program, like, you know, to get a code and education. So we met him at the airport, like, he, he, he came here, um, he um, we got him a hostel. And since then, we have like you know students from Nigeria, we have students from Liberia, like ones from Cameroon, like they come here to start, you know, to to um, do our training program. However, uh, because of funds, and you know, uh, you know, um, um, we we've we've had some students too that couldn't couldn't come here physically, 
So then we decided to start a virtual program. So we have a virtual program. Um, it runs online, but it is not like um, the a program where we just upload videos, but it's more like a, a live in-session video calls and where we train. Uh, we have uh, four students in Liberia and one student in Ivory Coast. Like they are running our, and one student in Nigeria too. They're running our training program. And so far, it's uh, it's something that we've been piloting and it's, it's been very successful. Because we have a, a student in Liberia called Titus um, he's completed a training program and he's um, he's flying to Ghana next month for our demo day um, to showcase the apps. And he wants to meet the team and to meet the community and um, everybody. So, I mean, what they did was just to apply on our website um, and then our admissions team will call them to arrange everything. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. Um, what I'm wondering, what is happening with the demo projects? I mean, you've had hundreds of students now, and I'm just wondering, like, if they create working apps, have you ever thought about, you know, incubating some of these solutions, or has anything come out of the, the demo day projects? Or, yes, yeah, so um, that's very interesting, and um, we, so uh, when we go out, I'll show you. We have a, a wall of fame with all our students, and you know what they are doing in our past students. So we have the wall of fame and new students come here aspiring to also be on the wall, you know? Um, one of the, the, the things that came up with, and we have like Kumba Media, um, and Kumba Media is a, a, a video streaming platform that enables, you know, movie producers here to uh, premiere their movies. Um, online and because now you know things have changed everybody is watching things on youtube and you know on your phones and it's very expensive to go to the mall to watch a movie or even your uber alone is you know um and so and also how many people can actually go to physical locations to watch a movie and kumba allows um, um african filmmakers to you know premiere their movies like all across the world um, and also in Africa, and you know, um, and so we we built that too. Um, is one of our graduates, um, and she was actually in our virtual program, um, um, and she so she built um, the. I think this week um, they had their first um, movie, um, which is like entirely like um, Kumba is the entire um, um, distributor for that movie. Um, it, it, it started running this week, and then next month, I think in December, um, they'll be launching the entire platform at Afrochella. Um, and the entire team is coming to Ghana, and and we Kuma is like you know the biggest um, success story of like co train projects, and we we've had projects in the past where uh, one of our students, he's a 12 year old Android developer, um, he built, yeah, he built. Um, um, an app to help you know sensitize people about sanitation um, in in Ghana um, and yeah we have and I mean it's 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 one of the things in now you know I'm now you know kind of thinking about um, you know how I can create opportunities um, you know and I I foresee in the future and the new future um, we having um, our own uh, incubator where projects that come from our demo day because not all the students actually want to find jobs some of them love their projects or their business and projects and some of them have really good ideas and um they wish that you know if they had the opportunity they could get um incubation uh, or they can get support uh, to pursue those ideas yeah so kumba is like you know a, a big um success story on we just hope that the launch becomes very successful when it takes all over Africa. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I mean, and I just love that you get in touch with so many ideas and projects. Yeah. Uh, demo day, I love that. If you could partner with anyone and ask them for anything, who would you partner with? What would you ask them for and why? So right now, the biggest thing we need is resources, right? We need, um, we need to partner with them because we are training people to use... Um, um, certain technologies that are run by certain institutions, like we are training people in Android, you know, having a partnership with Google, 
um, is going to be um, a big thing because we are training um, developers that are going to use their, you know, their software and their services um, to run businesses or they are going to be hired in top companies here. Um, and their cloud services as well. There are, there are so many services, there are so many things happening in Google that could be a resource for, for our students and in raising future software developers. Um, another um, company is uh, Amazon, um, AWS and cloud infrastructure. Um, they have, um, they have, I mean, the best like, you know, cloud um, infrastructure. And um, we are we train our students in you know when they are about to when they get to a level where they are building projects like you know, globally scalable projects, we train them in cloud um, software, um, and um, they getting um, you know we being partners with Amazon allows them to like you know even get credits to like explore, uh, and also like um, they have a, 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 pro, a training program. And we could get like resources um, to even um, certify our students and to become uh, experts um, in, in you know in cloud software and DevOps, um, and also universities, you know, top universities and technical training schools that want to partner with us um, to you know exchange resources. So it's it's mainly about partnering with like organizations, institutions that um, can you know help us with resources to make it. Um, the best like technical school in Africa. I have one final question. What would be your advice to young Ghanaian today? <laughs> they should dream. You know, like nothing is po is impossible. Um, and I mean, the world has changed. Um, I mean, I grew up like you know in Accra in the nineties and early two thousands. Things were very very different. You know, if um, if you were not born to you know. Um, well-to-do parents, there's a lot of limitation, you know, you have um, the school that you go to, you know, your, you know, your friends that come from rich backgrounds go to better schools, they get to go, you know, vacations, you know, um, they get opportunities, they get to use a Walkman, they get to use technology, you know, um, they get you know, a better life, um, basically, um, and opportunities as well. Um, and they were not, they were, and even if you went to school and your parents, you know, were not that connected, getting into places is very difficult, getting opportunities, even meeting people, meeting people to mentor you. And, and, uh, and even if you decide to become an entrepreneur, um, the cost is, is so high, you know, you have to, you need a shop, you need a warehouse, you know, you don't have a rich uncle to help you with all that. Um, until the coming of tech and, you know, you know, social media and um, I mean, you know, and the new way the world is structured, like to become a global village, it changed everything. You know, now I, I mean, I don't need to be in Harvard to know the things that Harvard you know, students know. You know, like the courses are online. Um, I can learn, I can get uh, opportunities. Um, I, you know, I can apply for, I mean, if I'm doing something great, I can apply for opportunities. Um, I don't need to be, to come from a privileged home. I can go to LinkedIn, I can go um, on Facebook, Twitter, like connect to mentors, advisors. I mean, people are happy to help you for free. Um, even if you want to start a business, you don't need to a warehouse, you don't need even a storefront. You can just start an online um, shop, you know. Um, so like it flattens the playground, you know. It, it, makes, it makes so many things, you know, that were not possible in the, in the past. It's now possible, you know. However, the society still has the mentality of the old order, you know. So most of the advice, most of the, you know, most of the culture and the talk is around that, is, is still there. And it is very limiting, you know. So being a, a young person growing up, grows up like with so many limiting thoughts, so many like, I can't do this, I can't, you know. Um, but I mean, the advice that I can give them is like, they can see the world have changed. Things are democratized now. Like you can tweet at the most powerful person on earth, you know, and what is better than that? So there's nothing you can't achieve. Whatever you can achieve, like, you know, just be realistic, you know, get help, get assistance um, from people. Um, and then, I, I mean, go for it. Um, it's, it's possible now. So many things that weren't possible in the past is, 
is possible now. You can sit in Accra and sell to people in New York. You, know, you can sell beads to people in New York. You can sell bags to um, people in, in, you know, in, in, in Germany. You can, you can do whatever you like, you know. So, I mean, it's, there, is, there is no, it's, it's, there, there are limitless opportunities now. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing, Richard. Love You're it. You're welcome. More power to you. <laughs>